Hello, this is Carrie again, and I have another video for you today. Today I have a review of two books, um, Painterly Days, um, uh, the Woodland Watercolor Book, and Painterly Days, the Flower Watercolor Book. Um, there is a subscription link down below, as well as links to past videos. Um, these books retail for $24. $4.99 um, but they were both sent to me by the publisher for review which I appreciate um, as I appreciate anything to help me um, get this to help me keep this show going um, especially you guys sharing with your friends and your family so anyway so let's get started this book is um, as I said it retails for $24.99 um, and I had a last saw it on Amazon for around like twenty twenty dollars and change um it is a, a book on relatively thick paper um certainly by watercolor what by coloring book standards though the paper is slightly thin by watercolor paper by watercolor standards if that makes any sense the paper is thick by coloring book standards but thinner by watercolor standards if does that make sense to you i hope that made sense um and it features um very detailed um renderings for you to watercolor on um the book is it does not have a um it does not have a blank swatching page for you to test your mediums which is weird um there's a lot of things about this book that aren't necessarily bad or good they're just weird if that makes any sense you guys you'll, you'll see when i start when i start going through the book um for example weirdness number one is that they call this a tutorial but it's really tips tutorials is more of a like directions on how to do something whereas tips is just tips um they use this um i like the idea of a color wheel but i found the mixing of the colors to be distracting if that makes any sense um i would have preferred a cleaner color wheel the i understand they're trying to make it artistic but it's a little distracting for me um that was the, the other thing that I came across this book was that it was there were choices that were made that were distracting to me personally um, that you guys might not be distracted by, if that makes any sense. Um, so um, it was weird. As like I told you, this book is, is weirdness in this book. Um, not bad or good, just different. Um, it has a table of contents, which I don't really see very often in adult coloring books, but there's no page numbers the um i can think of the only other book i can think of off the top of my head that had a table of contents if i remember correctly was georgie woodridge um birds and water life but those were numbered so it was weird like i said this is weird um so there's a lot of this um you guys know from the reviews that i've done of the joanna bassford book that these pages where it's just um, what I'm going to call talking, <laughs> um, in the middle of the book where they take the trouble of actually printing it is, I find that I would rather have the front to be a coloring book page, especially since there's no swatch page. Um, and then have this stuff in the back of a coloring page. But what they've decided to do here, which again is weird, um, is... So it, there's a page for you to color, and then there's a back, and the back is the same page, is the same image as the front. So so let me show you. So now so every image is printed twice except for the last one. Um, so this is the front. This is the back, which is the same image that's here on the front. So you get almost every image twice except for the very last one. So, but there's no, but even though, hey Stewie, excuse me, excuse me, okay, all right, excuse me Stewie, okay, bye, bye buddy, thank you, very much appreciated, bye, thank you, okay, so, you uh, can't be serious, I'm sorry about that, um, so, every image is twice every image minus one is there twice but the back is the same image um this also apparently comes out easier than i thought i wasn't trying to tear this up but this came off a little bit easier than i thought so that's a thing to keep in mind um wasn't expecting that 
Um, there are words and quotes, and you guys, you know, if you guys have seen me before, you know that I'm not a fan of words in my coloring. I just want to color. Um, I find it distracting. Um, maybe the, the lesson for me is that I get distracted easily because I find the it distracting. See, like I end up having to go to the front where the information is, um, look up what the picture is and then having to write it in in the back as opposed to what, um, what they did in Georgia Woodridge book, which is that the back was printed with almost the same information, not the same information, but the same idea of having more information about the image in the front. So I can't get, the book is um, fairly big. I believe it's about 10 by 10 and I can't get all of it in, but it doesn't matter because the back is repeat. This is some um, watercolor painting that I'm doing for using for a future review. This is on the Sennelier student grade watercolor paints that I purchased and I will review um, coming up. So the images are fairly detailed. Uh, so it's a little bit for me confusing to try to figure out what's um, extraneous detail and what's part of like what I can, like for example, like just to give you an example of what I mean, cause it's kind of confusing to have to say, okay. So like here, there's a lot of um, drawing here on the inside, but it I can actually just, put all this together as one image um whereas the outer lines are sort of more for me to pay attention to it's not it's not a big deal but it was distracting for me um so if you have vision problems you may find that a little bit difficult um can we i'm sorry i don't know what his damage is but he is just like be super needy today i may even have to pause this video to do whatever it is he wants just to get him to let me record goodness all right sorry about that um so there's this see another page is almost fell out so i guess you have to be a little bit careful because i guess it wants to um rip off which is fine if you want to display it oh sorry about that um, i have terrible insomnia so sometimes i yawn during the day but I want to show you the, the, the flower images. Um, I would tell you what these flowers are, but it's all the way in the front. There is There are some pages where it's got a lot of tiny details. This is probably one of the worst cases of this lots of tiny detail. Um, so I'm not sure what size brush I would be able to do this with. I'd probably have to do this with color pencil. Um, I mean, I know that part of it part of the appeal of watercolor is that you sort of you ignore certain lines and you some people like to go over the line um and some people like to stay in the line um but there's that so i i almost feel like i want to say that we should trust the art a little bit more when we do coloring books um so some parts of it feel a little bit gimmicky if that makes any sense um like the I want to call it an essay, but I realize it's just a paragraph of, you know, the quotes. Um, and I realize that a lot of people don't mind the quotes. So um, this, which is weird to me, um, had some recommendations, not necessarily good or bad, just weird. Um, for example, uh, the Prismacolor at Hobby Lobby. I mean, Hobby Lobby seems to be, anyway. Um, you can find it for less at other places. So the recommendations, there's nothing wrong with the recommendations in and of itself, but just the places that she says to get stuff from is not necessarily where the best deals are to be had at any given moment, if that makes any sense. Um, so there's that. All right, so this is the first book. So hopefully we can get through the second book a little faster. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was 10 minutes in already. Um, once again, there's this. Um, as I say, it's weird, the color wheel. I would have preferred a more traditional color wheel over this. It's just weird to me. Um, I would have also preferred, instead of this tutorial that's not a tutorial, um, because you're gonna be seeing these pages a lot. Because if you, 
Um, a friend of mine told me that what some people do when it has these fold-out sheets, which I prefer for the fold-out sheets, I prefer for them to be um, utilitarian in some way. So for example, we could have done a, um, I think it's called a value chart where it starts with the with a like a white dot and it's there's a black dot on the other hand and it goes and it tells you what the value is um a color wheel a ruler you know a list of color names and their pigments like just just like something that is you know utilitarian and and something that you can reference um that you can use as a reference because you're going to be seeing this a lot once again there is a table of contents with no page numbers um same as before where we could have used these sheets to either print out additional pages or to use as a testing page um, because there is no testing page here um and and then put like for example put this in the back of the corresponding page as opposed to printing it twice um I mean, the, those, that's the choices that I would have made. It's not necessarily, I mean, you might feel, you certainly are welcome to feel different. Of course, you, you're an adult. You can feel however you want. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. Um, so this is the same page. Um, <laughs> don't, don't mind my humor. See, this is why, this is why, because I feel like I can't necessarily be trusted with quotes because if I, because if I read a quote, I love Teddy Roosevelt and I don't have any problem with this quote, uh, but I, I'm just ornery and I would just, like, it just makes me think smart ass things that I shouldn't think and that, uh, not necessarily that I shouldn't think, but that I shouldn't say. And then I feel like adding my own smart ass quote as a response just to be a jerk. And like, I don't need that. I'm trying to relax. Like, I don't, I don't need to be tempted into being silly. Um, you, you don't need to see that either. You don't you, see like, like we could have all saved ourselves that trouble. But anyway, that's just my opinion on quotes. I know a lot of people really like them and they feel inspired by them. Um, there are some, like if you have vision problems, there are some areas that are particularly small, um, which is weird, not bad, not good, just weird. Like I sort of expected, um, there to be wider, more open spaces for you to watercolor paint in. Cause I feel like watercolor paint sort of moves around a little bit. Um, especially when you're new and you don't know what you're doing, which is me. Um, so that was weird to me that there's so many like tiny spaces um, for you to color and I know people are going to comment why I'm not showing the back of the page But really seriously the back of the page is just the same as the front page Um for all of the so like this says the strawberry here you go see it. it's the same page in the back um Not really sure why that happened. Um, I'm not sure if I talked about the paper in the in when I did the previous book just now, but the paper is it's thick by coloring book standard, but it's thinner than the 200 series Strathmore Skills watercolor paper, if that makes any sense. Um, it's thinner than any other quote unquote watercolor paper that I have, but it's also among the thickest water, among the thickest coloring book pages that I have. Um, there is a couple of coloring books that have thicker paper, um, but the paper quality is still good. You can use watercolor paints in these, um, in these books so you know it's totally doable i just finished reading lord of the rings again um i love reading those books so i just finished reading them again um so there's that i feel distracted by some of this but we went to yosemite national park and my wife just totally fell in love with john muir um, and it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun being at Yosemite National Park. And there is more, there's more like notes and stuff in the back, acknowledgements, but this, um, oh yeah, I'm not sure what, what's up with the Hobby Lobby recommendations. Um, there's nothing wrong with the, with the recommendations itself, but the places that I would look at would be like Amazon, Dick Blick, Jerry's, Cheap Joe's, because I feel like they have the the better prices. Um, so this is it. So overall, um, would I recommend this book? Yes, um, as long as you know 
like what you're getting. Um, I feel like this book, it's not that this book is bad. This book is still recommended. Uh, you should still, if you are into watercolor and you like the designs, you should still feel comfortable getting these books. I just feel like they could have been a better value, if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like they could have, it could have, the value could have been improved by different choices. Um, but that's just my feeling on it. Let me know in the comments what do you think about the single-sided versus double-sided debate. Um, what are some books that you've seen have covered that in ways that you liked? And um, I will see you guys next time. And thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, a like, and uh, share it with your friends and your family. All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye.